Hello, and welcome to Sovereign Financials, financial education for everyone. Hi guys, welcome back to Sovereign Financials. Today we're going to talk about Hertz, its current filing for bankruptcy, and why we personally think it's a bad idea to be investing in this company right now. Now we want to make sure you guys understand this is not financial advice, and maybe what we say could be wrong, maybe they end up doing great and people that own their stocks end up doing amazingly well, but we're going to explain why we don't think this is a good idea. So first we want to say here that Hertz filed for bankruptcy uh, on May 22nd. This is articles from May 25th, it's slightly afterwards, but basically Hertz Global Holdings announced Friday that it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, but that the company would remain open and be able to pay new vendors. So there's two kinds of bankruptcies. The first one for companies. The first one is Chapter 7 bankruptcy, where you say, hey, you know what, this company is not making any money, there's no way it's making money, and it's actually more profitable or better for me uh, to sell the company, sell all the assets off, pay off its, all its debt holders, and just be done with it, company disappears. That's not what Hertz is doing here. What Hertz is doing here is Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which allows them to take all their debts and their assets and restructure the company, and then hopefully at the end of the restructuring, come out of this and start making money again. Um, so here, Carl Icahn, who is a billionaire investor and a very big investor himself and his company in Hertz, uh, they ended up selling um, all of their all their their holdings in Hertz. So here, billionaire investor Carl Icahn sold out of Hertz Global Holdings, the car company that filed for bankruptcy last week, um, and he lost 1.6 billion dollars in doing so. And right here, he sold he sold off his entire 55.3 million shares. So he sold off his entire position. So here, Hertz, this guy is, knows this company very well. He says, hey, you know what? Hertz is filing Chapter 11 bankruptcy. I own a lot of their stock. I don't think their stock's going to survive um, in the way it's currently formed. And I'll tell you that. I'll explain that in a minute. So he sold off all his shares and at a loss at $1.6 billion. So a billionaire is selling off Hertz. Who's buying it, right? And why is the stock rallying? And we'll get there in a minute. So the first thing here I want to explain to you is um, how a Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy works so that we can kind of understand what's going on and why it's probably such a bad idea right now to be buying their stocks uh, in light of a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So here um, we have basically a balance sheet. A balance sheet kind of shows you all their assets. So here's all of Hertz assets, this big black box here, cars, software, maybe they own some of their storefronts, etc. And we're going to give it as an example, just as a pure example, we're going to say it's worth um, $100 million. And that's just to make the math easy. If you want to look at what it's actually worth, well, it's kind of hard, but you have to like add their assets and, and their income and everything, try to figure it out. But this is, we're going to say it's $100 million right now valued, prefer pretend. Now, their debt holders, which are the bond holders of, of Hertz, so if you own like a Burt's, uh, sorry, a Hertz bond, this would be you, is in the blue box here. So you have two levels of debt. You have senior debt, which means, hey, Hertz, whenever you have money, Every single month, right, Hertz makes some cash, they, they get some money, and the first part of that cash goes to pay the senior bondholders. These are the people that are first in line to collect their checks, so senior bondholders. And then after that, if they have more cash or enough, then they pay their junior bondholders, which means they're second in line to get their money. So this whole big box, though, are the debt or the bondholders, and we're going to say, for as an example, that they own that's worth $60 million. So 60% of the entire company. And then if Hertz still has more money, then it goes to the equity holders, which are the people that own the stock. And we're gonna say that's right now $40 million. So you see the equity holders, the people that own the stock are last in line to get any of the money from Hertz. Now, if the company is profitable and they can pay all of their debts, then there is money left over for the equity holders, which is great. That's the whole purpose of owning a stock. Now, in the case of a Chapter 11 bankruptcy, what Hertz is saying, like, hey, you know what? We don't have enough cash to pay off all of our debt um, and still be able to give people, you know, it, it, that's that's a big problem. Because you don't have enough money to pay off all your debt, let alone give money to the equity holders. So they say, hey, we're gonna freeze all of this, this balance sheet, and we gotta restructure it. So now let's come over to this side over here. So basically it's the debt holders versus the equity holders, and they're gonna to try to say what they think that the company is valued at. So it goes to this chapter 11 bankruptcy, there's all these lawyers and banks involved, they say, okay, you know what, maybe Hertz is not worth $100 million, maybe they're worth $50 million. And you know what, they actually cannot afford $60 million worth of debt, because that's what's making them go bankrupt, but they can afford $40 million of debt. Okay, so now let's figure out how we're gonna restructure this whole thing. 
So they say, okay, the senior holders, the senior debt holders, the people who are first in line to get their checks from cash, the blue box, they get to stay here. So they get to keep their bondholders. So these are the seniors. Sorry for my penmanship. Uh, so the seniors get to keep their position and they get to keep their bonds. Now, if they're uh, only worth 50 million, the equity holders, you're out. There's nothing left for you. There's no room left for you. So you just cut the equity holders out, the stockholders out, because um, there's no cash left. The juniors who are second in line for the cash, they become the new equity holders. So they're giving, they're actually given now the hurt stock. So they're given the hurt stock. And if you noticed here, the junior bondholders are now the new equity holders. And let's say they have $10 million. So 40 million in senior debt, 10 million in what is now the new stock, the new equity, and that creates the, the 50 million that the company can actually afford um, to have. And what happened to the old people that own the stocks? They're gone, that's it, like it's completely gone. So typically what happens is, is a company files for bankruptcy, chapter 11 bankruptcy, and then um, they usually get delisted from the stock market. So the people that own the hurt stock is now become zero and it's delisted, you can't trade it no more. The company then restructures like so, and then they get relisted on the market. Now, obviously, there's variations to this. They could just have it so they're not getting delisted right away, and then they, they go through this whole process, and then you have the new equity holders. Um, there is also a small chance that there is enough. Like, let's say, um, you know, this number is a little smaller. Let's say this uh, the junior holder is only like $8 million. Then maybe there's a small little box here for, like, the old equity holders. So maybe the old equity holders, the people that had all this stock over here, they don't get completely wiped out. Maybe now they just own this little little rinketing little slice right there. So either way though, this is never good for the equity holders. Like you're not gonna have this, you're not gonna go from like a big share like this to a bigger share. You're gonna go to a smaller share or you're just gonna be completely wiped out. So that's why we don't think that owning this hurt stock right now is a good idea. And that's why Carl Icahn did the same thing, right? He sold off all of his equities because he's like, hey, I'm either gonna get wiped out or at the end of the restructuring, I'm only gonna own this tiny small little fraction of equity and all the most of the equity is going to be going to the junior bondholders and the seniors will have will have their fair share of the bond still too. Um, so now so the question is okay so if the smart money let's say Carl Icahn right is is uh, moving out of let me just go back over here is moving out well first let's talk about this so here if obviously if the company gets delisted the stock goes to zero that's it you're gone so um, Hertz announced on Wednesday um, that it received a delisting de notice from the New York Stock Exchange on May 26, which is four days after it filed for bankruptcy. Um, the car rental company appealed the notice and requested a hearing to maintain its spot on the exchange. Hertz shares will continue to trade publicly pending the appeal. So they go to the appeal, the New York Stock Exchange might say, nope, you're done, delisted, gone, your money is gone. Um, and if they continue to trade, then we'll kind of have to see what happens. But it, you know, any day, just be instantly gone. Um, they also stated there can be no assurance whether there will be equity value in the company's common stock should it be delisted. Hertz warned in a regulatory finding. Well, yeah, obviously, right? And then um, Hertz shares are hot off a shocking rally fueled by a wave of risk-hungry retail investors. Retail investors are your average, your everyday investor. Um, the stock rocketed from 82 cents, right? Because if you're going to go bankrupt, right, the stock should be worth, I mean, almost nothing because you're taking a large risk that the, the, you know, basically will be worth nothing. Um, however, it rallied to $5.53. Um, there can be no assurance that the NYSC, the New York Stock Exchange, will grant the company's request for continued listing at the hearing and whether there will be equity value in the company's, the company's common stock. So here Hertz is telling you, like, hey, we might get delisted and your stock may become absolutely worthless. So here is um, uh, a graph here, and it's kind of interesting. So this is a this just tracks Robinhood. So obviously, you know, institutional investors, uh, we'll say essentially none, will be using Robinhood to invest. It's, it's mainly for retail investors. Um, so here's the price of Hertz stock doing their thing. And then it comes up here on May 22nd, which is right about here, they file for chapter 11 bankruptcy, the stock and the stock just plummets. And you can see up until this point, you know, there's uh, the green line here is the, the number of Robinhood investors that are holding Hertz. So uh, until then, like Robinhood investors are not looking to invest in it. All of a sudden the stock starts dip plunging, right? And people are so conditioned to buy the dip on everything that all of a sudden the Robinhood users that are now holding the stock just start skyrocketing. And even though it's going down, all the institutional investors are still selling the stock. 
then you know it starts um, the uh, price of herd stock starts rallying a little bit as the number of Robinhood users are just piling into this thing. So this is just a huge amount of risk that people are taking, and I don't think they realize it. They just they're just buying the dip on anything that goes down. Now I, I showed you those fake numbers, you know, the the hundred million and six million everything. If you want to actually look at like the actual debt they hold and the equity and everything, you can just go to Yahoo Finance or pick up anything that looks at their balance sheet, and you can look at the here. Um, let's see where do I have it at? Their total assets. You look at their assets and their liabilities and all that stuff. If you want to get the actual real numbers, but I was just showing them for an example. Now, on top of that, what I think is a little unethical, and I can't believe the SEC is going to allow this to happen, is uh, here's an article by TechCrunch. Forget the casino. Bankrupt Hertz can now sell up to $1 billion in stock. So remember, um, on the other graph, right, is the first people to get their money are the debt holders. So if the debt holders could somehow get more money from the equity holders, right, then they would be more covered. They would be more protected, the people that own the bonds. And mostly, for the most part, retail investors do not buy uh, directly by bonds. So, like the chance of if you own a Robinhood account, like you probably own a bunch of stocks. You might even own Hertz stock itself, but you probably don't own any Hertz bonds. Um, so here, Hertz, the rental car company that is going through Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings, can now sell up to one billion dollars in stock as it seeks to tap into one of the hottest tickers in town. Yes, that's right. The company, which is fighting the New York Stock Exchange from being delisted, can now sell stock that might soon be wiped out completely. So this is the thing, right? This is like this is terrible in my opinion. If you are a company, you're going bankrupt, and you let's say I own bonds in that company, the only way for me to be more protected is to get more money from equity holders. So if I can if I can have Hertz sell more stock, so let's say I sell another billion dollars of stock, there's now a billion dollars more in the Hertz company that would first go to me as a bondholder, let's say. And protect me, and in the and during this chapter 11's bankruptcy, not only do, do I get does the bondholder get more protected, but now you wipe out the stockholders, right? So it's it's just it's just I don't I think it's terrible. I, I just I, I can't believe they're allowing that to happen. Remember, so if this is worth a hundred million dollars, and I um I I, I I sell more equity, so I sell more stocks, right? More of the red. I sell more stocks. Say a billion dollars of stocks. That now adds more money into my assets, into my cash. And remember, cash first goes to senior holders and then the junior holders, and the bot the equity holders still get wiped out, right? So they're really gonna milk this this rally that people are throwing all this money into Hertz. So um, that's it for this video, guys. That's why we personally think this is a, a terrible investment. I mean, there's a chance that some of the equity doesn't get wiped out and you own a very small portion of Hertz in the end of all of this. But for the most part, most likely, the equity holders get completely wiped out. There won't be any equity left over here. And people that are rallying into Hertz just because to buy the dip are probably going to get hurt in the end. Um, but, you know, do your own research. Figure out what you're going to do. But that's currently our position. Um, once again, guys, like we see us in every video and everybody else says it, if you come down here, hit that like button, hit subscribe. We really appreciate it. If you have friends that are currently investing in Hertz, and I highly recommend that you share this video with them so they can kind of understand what's going on and the risk they're taking. Um, thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.